many of us find ourselves in need of fighting a court case of some sort somewhere down the line in our lives. Whether it's because of an individual who has harmed you at work or any other place or a group of individuals who have harmed you in your reputation or anything else, many people find themselves obliged to go down the legal route in order to hold somebody accountable for their, for their oppression. However, there are certain cases that we would probably not look to take out a lawyer. Small cases like, for example, a speeding ticket. The vast majority of people will not challenge this in court. The case is not that large. However, the bigger the case becomes and the more threatening it is to your life and your family, your reputation, your wealth, etc., the more compelled you feel to hire a lawyer to speak on your behalf. Imagine with me, dear brothers and sisters, now a scenario where you find yourself walking into a courtroom to represent yourself. Your opponents, they are legally represented. They have many professionals whom they have hired. You, at the same token, you don't have any representatives. You don't understand the legal terminology. You don't have anybody to witness for you. And the case is very big. Your entire future is on the line. Imagine the fear and the anxiety, how terrified you will feel to walk into that courtroom knowing that you will have to stand for yourself, represent yourself, nobody will be in your defense except yourself. This is a frightening imaginary scenario. With that said, brothers and sisters, I fast forward to a day called Yawmul Qiyamah, the day of judgment, where many people will find themselves in that exact scenario that we have just described where man will find himself being escorted now to the court of the king, Al-Jabbar, the compeller, Al-Aziz, the most mighty Allah, to stand before him to be asked about every small and big detail in your life. On a day when the tongues of people will be far too twisted to talk, and hearts would have reached throats in their exit because of fear, imagine the difficulty of a day when you will have to defend yourself in the court of Allah, and nobody is there to do the speaking on your behalf. Today, brothers and sisters, I want to speak to you about the topic of shafa'a intercession. When somebody or something intercedes for somebody else, something vouches for somebody else, something advocates for something or somebody else, I ask a question, what are the various things that we can do today in order to prepare lawyers, to prepare advocates, to prepare shafa'a intercessors, who can speak on our behalf on the day of judgment? There are certain things that we can start doing today so that you will have to do minimal talking on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah when people will be too afraid to speak. And we will mention just a few of them today. Memorize them dear brothers and sisters and do your best to advocate them and to apply them. The first, a person who dies in the city of Medina. This person will have intercession on the day of judgment. Thus the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whoever of you is able to die in the city of Medina, let him pass away there. Because I, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, will intercede for a person who dies in Medina. Now you and I may turn around and say, this is very far-fetched. This is difficult to achieve. I do not envisage this happening anytime soon. Merely visiting the city of Medina has become very challenging for me. Let alone living there, this is going to be very difficult. So is there anything else that we can do to prepare lawyers and advocates and intercessors? There is, because the Rahmah of Allah is so vast. The second advocate of a person on the day of judgment, the second lawyer, is the book of Allah, the Qur'an. And that is accessible to every single one of us. The Qur'an will be given a voice on the day of judgment. It will be speaking with a sound that everybody can hear. And some people will enter paradise. And some people will enter hell because of the book of Allah, the Qur'an. Thus the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, as Imam Muslim narrates on the authority of Abi Umamat al-Bahili, he said, recite the Qur'an frequently because it will speak and defend and intercede for people on the Day of Judgment. Are there any particular chapters of the Qur'an that we must give special attention to? He said, give special attention to the two surahs of the Qur'an, Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran, chapter 2 and chapter 3 of the Qur'an, because they will come on the Day of Judgment in the form of two clouds, or in the form of two canopies, or in the form of two flocks of birds, and they will be arguing for their people on the Day of Judgment. They will be arguing on your behalf on the Day of Standing. The Qur'an will have a voice, dear brothers and sisters, this is a lawyer that every one of us can hire today. In the life 
life of this world, we may not have the finances needed to hire the best of lawyers. As for the Quran, every Muslim is able to hire that book, i.e. to defend you on the day of judgment. Thus, Abi Huraira the companion would say, as Imam al-Darimi narrates in his Sunan, Abu Huraira the companion, he said, recite the Quran because it is the best intercessor on the day of judgment. He said, the Quran will speak and it will say to Allah on the day of judgment, the Quran will say, Oh Allah, imagine you standing and in front of you is the book of Allah defending you and arguing your case, pleading with Allah to allow you to enter Jannah. The Quran will say, Oh Allah, beautify him with the beauty of honor. So Allah will beautify you with the beauty of honor. Then the Quran will say, Oh Allah, allow him to wear the garments of honor. So Allah will dress you with the garments of honor. Then the Quran will say, Oh Allah, place on his head the crown of honor. And so Allah will place on his head the crown of honor. Then the Quran will say, Oh Allah, be pleased with him. Oh Allah, accept him. Because this is the greatest ambition of any human being. Allahu Akbar. So what is our plan for the book of Allah? What is our daily relationship with the Quran? Wherever we go, dear brothers and sisters, let us ensure we have a copy of the Quran with us. Either in our pocket, in our handbag, in our rucksack, there is a strong relationship with the Quran and a 10-year plan with regards to its understanding through the Arabic language, with regards to its memorization, with regards to its application. We have a clear plan that we want to achieve within 5 to 10 years pertaining to the Book of Allah. By doing so, we are preparing our lawyers for the Day of Judgment. As for advocate number three, lawyer number three, this is pertaining to asiyam, fasting. This will also speak for a person Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So I say congratulations to those brothers, to those sisters who fast the month of Ramadan. And then they maintain a certain level of extra fasts all throughout the year. Mondays and Thursdays, or the three Ayyam al the three lunar days, or Ashura and Arafah, and the likes of these days, such a person is preparing his advocate, his lawyer, his representative on the Day of Judgment. Thus Ahmad, he narrates in his Musnad on the authority of the companion Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that fasting and the recitation of the Qur'an will both be given a voice, they will speak for a person on the Day of Judgment. As for fasting, fasting will say, Oh Allah, I prevented him from eating and drinking throughout the day, so allow me to speak on his behalf. And the Qur'an will say, Oh Allah, I prevented him from sleeping during the night, so allow me to intercede to speak on his behalf. The Prophet ﷺ said conclusively, they will both be given intercession. As for the fourth type of shafa, fourth intercession, this is every single extra unit of salah you take care of today. Your nawafil, after you have perfected the five daily prayers, the extra prostrations, the extra units of salah will speak on your behalf on the day of judgment. So congratulations to those who have a strong relationship with every type of sunnah prayer. Imam Muslim narrates that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say to those who were serving him, Do you need anything? Look, he was saying to the ones serving him, Do you need anything? Can I serve you in any way? And on one particular day, one of those who were serving him said to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, Ya Rasulallahi hajati, O Messenger of Allah, yes, please give me my request. He said, what is your request? He said, my request and my need is for you to intercede for me on the day of judgment. The Messenger وسلم, was impressed with this request. He said to him, Who guided you to that request? Who taught you that request? He said, O Rabbi, my Lord. He said, Therefore, help me fulfill this request of yours by making sure you prostrate to Allah Almighty a lot. Make sure that you have a strong relationship with Salah, the obligations that you perfect, and the Sunan that you now study. What are all of the Sunan, the extra prayers that you can pray? Study them, dear brother, dear sister. Make a conscious effort to know all of them or as many as you can. The 12 extra sunnahs of prayers that are surrounding the 5 daily prayers. The salah of duha, are we taking care of that? The salah of istikhara, when we are confused, are we taking care of that? The sunnah of wudu, the sunnah after committing a sin, the prayer of repentance, are we praying that? Let us create a relationship with every extra type of salah and not fall lazy in that regard and realize that by doing so you are preparing your lawyers and your advocates who will speak on your behalf and give you an easy time on the day of judgment. Somebody may say, I am lazy and I know I will forget. So I need something else. I will try to do this but guide me to something else. In addition to this, you have advocate number five. It cannot get any easier than this. A dua. A single dua that you say, dear brother, dear sister, after hearing the adhan. And this will qualify you by the permission of Allah for the intercession of the beloved alayhi salatu wasalam. 
Thus Imam al-Bukhari narrates on the authority of Jabir that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever hears the adhan, the call to prayer, and then when it finishes, he says the following words, O oh Allah, you are the Lord of this perfect call, and you are the Lord of this established prayer. We ask you, O oh Allah, to give Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-wasila. Al-wasila is a station in paradise that will only be for one human being, and we hope that will be for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you say after hearing the adhan, O oh Allah, Lord of this perfect call, and you are the Lord of the established prayer, Give Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-wasila and give him al-fadila, virtue, and give him a station of praise that you have promised him. He said, whoever says this after hearing the adhan, my intercession for him on the day of judgment will become an obligation upon me. Allahu Akbar. Somebody may say, Brother Ali, even this is difficult. I live far away from the masjid and I don't hear the adhan as much as I would like to hear it. I don't have this opportunity very frequently. Is there anything else I can do to hope to guarantee lawyer, an advocate, a shafi'i, intercessor for me on the day of judgment? And the answer is yes, and we will conclude with number six. Advocate number six, lawyer number six. It is the taking of the good people as friends. It is to take the righteous people, the people of goodness, as friends. Yawm al-Qiyamah, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the believers, after Allah has saved them from the fire and Allah allows them to enter Jannah, they will realize that some of their friends are missing. Some of their friends whom they studied with, maybe they prayed with, they fasted with, they engaged in hajj with, they did da'wah with, and in Jannah they are missing. And this is a narration that Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim narrate and Ahmad in his Musnad on the authority of Abi Sa'id al-Qudri. So they will complain to Allah, the believers, Oh Allah, there are certain servants of yours, brothers of ours who used to fast with us, they used to pray with us, they used to give zakah with us, they did hajj with us, Oh Allah, we don't see them here in Jannah. They know that they had been taken to the hellfire. They didn't make it. So Allah the most merciful will say to those believers, He will say to them, Go to the hellfire and take out whoever you recognize. Then Allah will protect their bodies from the hellfire. Then they will enter inside. And they will begin searching for their brothers. That person could be me. That person could be you. They will search for their sisters. And they will look in Jahannam and they will see some people burning up to their ankles. Others up to their knees. Others up to their waists others up to their chests and some people will almost entirely be submerged in oblivion in Jahannam in fire and so they will begin pulling out their brothers and sisters taking them out of the hellfire rescuing them by the permission of Allah this is shafa'ah this is intercession and they will place them into Nahrul Hayah the river of life and their bodies will begin to grow their blackened destroyed and burnt bodies will begin to grow and when they are full and healthy again Allah will allow them to enter Jannah but if you and I, brothers and sisters, are not taking the best people as friends, we're not with them in the salah, we're not with them in the lectures and the positive, the good congregations and gatherings, if we're not there, how will they recognize us when they come to rescue us from the hellfire if we don't make it the first time? How will they recognize us? Thus Imam al-Baghawi, he narrates in his tafsir that al-Hasan al-Basri, he said, take as many good friends as you can because they will be given intercession on the day of judgment. These are six things, dear brothers and sisters, that I wanted to share with you with regards to lawyers and advocates and intercessors who will make our lives so much easier on the Day of Judgment. We have the opportunity to start employing them today.